back everybody. This video is about looping and some questions that I got from a patron of the channel. So in this video, uh, we're gonna get back to the music in a second, but uh, welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher. The question was, what are you listening to? Me, as asking me. What are you listening to when you play into the looper? Are you listening to, uh, you know, a click or beat? What are you listening to? Uh, do you have the recording of the loops set to certain lengths? And how are you syncing up everything? How are you keeping all the loops, you know, exactly lined up? And there's very easy ways to do that. It makes, if you have it set up right, it's very easy. You don't have to do a whole lot. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've got my looper set up. So in case you have this looper, RC505, uh, you could do that. So let's just take a listen real quick at uh, what I just recorded. I'm going to talk about it, and then I'll show you the settings um, to recreate this kind of thing. Now, first of all, we recorded a couple percussion over here, and this is two bars. I want you to watch the red light, the red countdown. That's the measure bar. Let's listen to it. Two, three, four, one, two. So two bars long. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right? So when it counts down, that's when it repeats. Here's the cajon. Same thing. Two bar track. All right. And then in ukulele, now watch, this is four bars long. So watch the red, again, you'll see the length here. Ukulele chord progression, four bars long. All of them together. Two bars, four bars. All right, so the question is, where is that setting? How do we set the loop length in terms of bars? Let's go down and look. So if you press uh, one of these edit buttons on a track, you go to track, it'll say track three in this case, and then you press the right arrow, I think it's eight times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It shows you the measure and the, and the number of measures shows you how long that loop is. And this is set to four measures. If I press track four, you can see that it's changed to a number two. Track four is two measures. Track five, also two measures. So that's where you set it, and you can set it here with the memory value knob. You can go down. Let's make sure we're in track. Why can't I set it? Hold on. Oh, I know why. <laughs> I know why it's not moving. Because there's something recorded there. So you can't change the loop uh, length once you put something in the track. So let's go back to a different track that hasn't been used. Let's go to track two. Track two is empty. And now I can, I can change the the length of the loop. I can change it down to one measure, even less, half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note. And I can go up in measures. I remember the ukulele was, was four. I can go to eight and beyond. I can go up to hundreds of measures. How many? Well, over 600. <laughs> you could spend the rest of your life making loops. Look at this, you guys. A thousand. Okay, that's the answer. So you can have a, a loop where all of your loops are a thousand measures. The longest loops ever. Okay, uh, let's look at other things that are here. I'm gonna put this back down to a reasonable number. So the key uh, with setting up your looper, and the consideration is, um, what are you playing? Uh, how many? How many bars do you need for what you're looping? In, in my case, with this one, percussion, because it's repetitive, usually, you know, 
Shaker is like one bar, one beat. Tambourine is two beats. Uh, the ukulele, you need more time because it's doing a chord progression, obviously. So you need to think ahead. That's a little bit of planning. Set up your looper. So you can set it up if you have different lane things. A lot of the time, I just set them all to two or four bars. It depends what I'm doing. But I want to move through and get the layers in quickly. So if I don't need four bars, you know, if it's just a pattern, simple pattern, like a conga beat that's basically one measure long, I'll probably set it up to two bars. Uh, but you could even just do one and just play everything really short, get it looped in quickly. Um, so that's a consideration. If you, like I did in this, have chord progressions, set them up for uh, longer. Um, okay, let's look at some other settings here. Another thing that's important is um, the sync loop syncing. So if I go to this one, it says loop sync on, and that keeps everything lined up. Uh, tempo sync also on. So if I change the tempo faster or slower, uh, all of the loops will track with that. They may not sound great when they're when you're changing the tempo, but they will slow down or speed up based on the tempo. Um, Oh, okay, tempo sync on. Let's go to the next setting. I want to go back in here. Um, pan, you can change where a, a, a track is panned in the mix, so left or right. One shot would be if it just plays once and then stops. Uh, we're not going to get into all of these settings. Um, you can set the stop mode, start mode, all that stuff. Um, all right, so let's exit. Now, let's look at the rhythm, because that was another thing that was asked, is what am I listening to? So if I press the uh, edit button where rhythm, I can set the level. Um, I can also set the pattern. We're going to listen to these in a second. And I can set the measure. Is it a 4-4? Four, four? Is it 3-4? What, what's the meter? And now here's the one that's important if you're going to be doing looping like I am, because this is the line out. Now what this means is I can have the rhythm pattern coming out the main outputs, which are back here. I know they're kind of hard to see, but they're at the top. The main outs are over here. Or I can just have it come out the headphones, which is here. So right now I have it just coming out of the headphones, but I'm going to start the rhythm and you guys can't hear that, but I'm going to turn this on, line out, on. Now that's what I'm hearing. So that was what I was listening to as I was playing. Let's go back, and I can select different patterns here. I can go, you know, have anything, even just a basic click. Uh, I, I prefer a lot of the time just to have like a simple beat, doesn't really matter. I can also of course set the level, so if I want to hear it just very softly in the mix just to get going, I can do that. Uh, all kinds of things you can set up in there. So again, if I want it going out the main outs, then I have to have line out on or I can turn it off. And now I'm the only one hearing that right now. All right, another, um, another question was, how do, um, how do we, let me turn this off, it's still going. <laughs> um, how do we sync everything up? The, the looper does that automatically when you have the sync on, you know, loop sync on. Um, let me give you a couple more tips on looping. This is not about the looper so much as it is about how you might interact with a looper. I want to show you another couple settings down here. So what I do, um, because I'm doing instructional videos and sometimes I'm talking, I'm not just doing looping. So what I do is I have a few different input settings. C, I have A, B, C. A is my long reverb. Hello. So I use this for things like flute or different percussion sounds. B is my short reverb or medium reverb, and I can control the level here. So if I want it dry, and then I can boost it up. 
a little bit. The uh, cajon, I put some reverb on. And the ukulele. Uh, but there was less reverb over here on the percussion. Now C is interesting because what I do with C is I use it to boost my voice up when I'm talking. Now listen to this. So if I press C, did you hear that jump? So this is B. And I use this for the instruments for the reverb. I can add that in. And then when I want to talk, I do C. And that's because I have a compressor on there. I have this thing, uh, Dynamics. And if I want to uh, edit it, I can, I can just edit a natural compressor. Dynamics are plus seven. So it, it raises the uh, level of my voice a little bit. Uh, because when I'm looping, I don't want that much volume going into the the looper or or out you know into my mixer because it'll just or it's too much because I'm looping a lot of things so I usually need to have the volume a little lower for the input but when I'm just talking I want to kind of match the overall level you know get my voice so it's up there so that's just something that I do um, also okay so that's one thing I do Another thing, and you can go back and watch the beginning of the video and see this, is that I find that for certain sounds, um, like the bass drum, the bass cajon sound, I can get a better quality loop, not only uh, sonically, because it won't have any click in the beginning, but I can get a smoother loop if I leave out the downbeat. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. If I leave out the downbeat and I start my loop on any other beat after the downbeat and then I play into the downbeat and then that's the loop. So the loop recording, and you can go back and watch it, you can see it in, in the overhead view. Um, the loop is recording before and after I play, right? Uh, but what I do is I, I, I just leave out, I leave off the first note. So I'll give you an example. Let me turn these other tracks down and let's record. Um, let's make sure I have this on the right setting. I want to have two measures. Okay. And that's two. Let's put this on two. All right. So I'm going to record. Uh, a couple measures of cajon, and um, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna do it with uh, starting on the downbeat, and we're gonna see what that sounds like. And then I'm gonna do one uh, starting uh, after the downbeat, and you can tell me which one you think sounds better. All right, here we go. There's gonna be one bar, one measure of count off. That's another question: is how how many measures of count off? Um, I'll show you that in a second. So let's try this. Okay, not bad, but here's what I prefer to do. So here's another way to do it. So that one start I started after the beat, like there, two, three, two, three, four, one. Start. That's just a tip. If you guys want to do that, you can. And to erase a track, by the way, just press uh, the stop button twice. That erases it. All right. So last thing is, what about the count off? Um, that is, I believe, in the rhythm uh, tab. Let's go to the overhead. That's in the rhythm tab. So you press rhythm, and then you get the rhythm level. You get the pattern, the beat, the, the line out. And then rhythm uh, record count. I have it set to one measure. You can set it to uh, off. Well, it's either off or one measure. So um, you could you could just play. You could start your looper playing. Uh, let me turn this rhythm back on. 
so you can hear it. So you could, uh, like I said, you could start You start the rhythm and then you could uh, press record and play. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so you can just have a metronome going, you know, you don't have to align it as a count off. Um, you don't have to have any count off. You can just start your, start your looper and you could still hear the, the click or the back beat, the, the beat that you have, but it'll start recording immediately. For my purposes, and you saw at the beginning of the video, I like to have that one measure count off and then I'll start looping. Um, there's a couple other settings that you can use, for example, in the uh, track mode, you could set it up so that when you um, go into record mode, it starts and then as soon as you're done, as soon as you press it again, um, it goes into, I don't know where it is. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna describe it. Uh, you can have the loop layer uh, when you press when you press the uh, after the record button. It's red, and then when you press it again, it can either go into overdub mode, which in which case it turns yellow, or it can go out of record mode. So go back and watch the beginning of this video because you'll see when I recorded the percussion, I have mine set up in overdub mode. So I need to press the uh, record play button twice to take it out of record mode. If I just press the play button, well, the first time I press it, it goes into loop mode, record, and then I press it again, it goes into overdub mode. So it's still recording and it's gonna layer things on top of the first recording. Um, but you can change that. Sometimes you might wanna have it just record and then you press it and it stops. Um, I've, I, I'm okay with overdub, but sometimes, I want it to just stop recording, especially if I'm switching instruments and making some noise, you know, and I have to pick up something. I don't want it to go into the mic. I don't want it to get on the track. Okay, so that's pretty much what I have for you in this video, you guys. If you have any other questions, uh, if you would like to connect with me more, uh, get more specific guidance, of course, you're welcome to join us at patreon.com slash Kalani, where you can, like it says, direct message me. You get more access to other lessons all that good stuff over there. Appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Where's my bell? Here's one, I'll hit my bell. You hit that bell. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed this. Happy looping. See you in a future video.